You are listening to the Retina UK Talking Tech Peer Support Group meeting recorded Thursday 6th of July 2023. Hello and welcome to our Talking Tech Peer Support Group from Retina UK. Welcome everybody if you are a returning a uh, member or if you are new to the group, welcome this evening. Today's meeting is going to be focused around our wellbeing. We launched a new service at Retina UK last year called Discover Wellbeing, where we help to hope, um, help people that are struggling with their physical or their mental or their emotional wellbeing by a toolkit that we have launched on our website and it helps those that have been recently diagnosed with inherited sight loss whether you've hit a new impact point in your sight loss journey and you're struggling with the change in your vision this could be anything from loss of job or loss of driving license for example and also we have a toolkit for those that are living with someone that has um, a sight loss condition. And this could be a family member, a friend, a carer, or anybody that would like emotional support if they're struggling with someone um, that they know that has got um, a sight loss condition. The website focuses on um, uh, online videos, um, which can be um, viewed through um, any devices, including your phones or on a PC or Mac, and also downloadable contact uh, content, which is in PDF or Word document format, which you can listen to um, on any screen reading device. You are struggling with your um, mental, physical, or emotional, or even spiritual well-being, and you would like more information about this the service that we have, then please contact services at retinauk.uk or wellbeing at uk or and someone will speak to you of how we do the service. So moving on to our wellbeing, we all know technology can support our lives. We're living with sight loss, but what we would like to know is, you know, are there any tips in software, apps, devices, technology that you guys use, whether it's in the home, the workplace, out and about, that actually help you with your well-being. And um, I will start with a, an app that I only found about out at the weekend. So if we have any gardeners or um, nature lovers um, with us this evening, there is a new app that is available or an app might know about that's available free on I, um, iOS or Android um, from the iStore or the Play Store and it's called Picture This and it's an app where you can point at any flower, tree, shrub or herb um, and it will um, take a photograph of it and then it will tell you exactly what that plant or tree is. So if you are someone that has hit a new impact point and you love gardening and you find that is something that's very therapeutic to you and it helps you with your well-being, but your sight loss has got to the point where you can't actually get out and distinguish one plant from another, this app might be able to help you get back in the garden, get your, your gloves on and start um, doing your plants this summer. So that was the, the first app that I actually found out. So is, is anybody else got any tech? that they would like to chat about. So have we got your hands up? Yep, Scott has got his hand up. So Scott, well, which one? Racing. Right, Scott. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep. Hey, you got the name pretty good. Um, <laughs> I, I need, I want the French pronunciation now though. Racine. Uh, Racine. <laughs> Racine, you got to roll, roll the R. Um, <laughs> I, I actually am a long time gardener. I, I'm 60 now and been gardening since I was 15. Uh, before you download the picture of this, which I have had before, um, if you have an iPhone, and I'm sure the Androids have something similar, when you take a photo, at, at least the later models, um, the information, but once you open up your photo that you've taken of the flower or the plant, um, 
at the bottom in the middle, there's an info tab. If you click on that and then go up, scroll with your thumb up the left side of your phone, uh, it would be similar on the iPad, I, I would assume. Uh, it'll say, describe plant. And if you click on that, um, I found it the best. Uh, it's not an app, it's built right into the phone. I've got a 13 Pro. I think it goes back to the 11s, iPhone 11s, but you'll have to test it. But it has been very accurate. Um, now it will give you, it'll give you a description of the plant. Um, if it is a plant that you're not familiar with, uh, I have no vision at all. Uh, you'll need someone there with you to say, yep, it's one of the plants. It'll give you a bunch of photos to compare it to. Uh, but uh, my wife, in my case, will say, yep, yeah, that's it there. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the Mark Baxter, uh, Rosa, whatever. <laughs> and uh, it, it's very accurate. It comes as part of the phone. Um, I have not tried. Uh, have you tried to picture this, uh, Mark? I've, well, my, my, um, a relative of mine tried it. He's got the Google Pixel and he tried it in a back garden. And although he's not visually impaired, he did take the photograph of it and it ac accurately told what the plant is, its Latin name, description, yeah. and literally how tall this the, the, the thing will grow, you know, what kind of positioning in the garden, how much sunlight. Yeah. There was so much information. And I knew this app yeah. existed because I actually chatted to someone about it the other day. And I knew this app existed, but I don't remember what it was called. And it was only by sheer coincidence there was a on in my yeah, new back garden. So I'll have to yeah. I'll have to go back and check it out because originally mm. they were you know, they were okay, but sometimes they'd throw you astray. Uh yeah. give you several different plants and and uh so I will say that the um, the Apple uh, info, it'll also say if I take a picture of a ship, I'll, I'll use the Belfast, uh, which is downtown on the yeah. Thames. If I take a picture of that, didn't know what it was, it'll come up and say, oh, this is the HMS Belfast World War II and I give the details like you were saying about the plants. It'll also do buildings. Um, if you get a shot of a building uh, that it is in the uh, photo bank, so oh, that's cool. Okay. No, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing, it's amazing yeah. little app. So you know, a lot of people feel that they can't do certain things, you know, because technology is not there. But it is. It's just a case of, of having a, a, a Google or jumping onto Safari and just saying, you know, I like to do this. Is there any apps out there that can yeah. do it? You know, yeah, so and it's. It's moving so fast now that I, I, uh, it's hard to keep up almost because things are, I'll speak mm. to another app uh, a bit later. And uh, that those of you that have Androids will probably be keen on that one. So. No, that's brilliant. Has anyone um, got any, have we got any other hands up? Can I ask a question, Robin here? Yeah, go on in Robin, yeah. D just re regarding the, what's this app? I wonder, would it identify statues or would it identify paintings if you were in the gallery and you wanted to snap them? Yes, That's a very good is question. the answer to that question. Very if very it impressive. is, yeah, if it is in uh, now, again, uh, there's a statue back in, I'm going to say Nova Scotia in Canada. It didn't recognize that one, but right. once it gets inputted into the, uh, this is a family statue of a friend of ours. So, uh, but the big statues like well the statue of liberty or uh queen elizabeth or the um who is it um the uh, admiral downtown uh, i can't oh, believe nelson's it. Column. Like, nelson. in nelson's column yeah so nelson. it will identify s stuff like that mm. thank you scott interesting impressive yeah. no it is yeah. a very good app yeah so well definitely and it will be definitely worth knowing um if people are actually downloading it on um, Apple or whether you are downloading it on an Android device, it will be nice, you know, um, for our next meeting, you know, if anyone has had a go at this, you know, it would be good for some feedback, you know, um, as, to, as to how accurate this is and what you've used it for and, you know, as it helped you maintain, you know, an active, um, you know, social life, um, is it, uh, it help you with, you know, maintaining hobbies, you know, like say, uh, Robin, if you, if you like to go to museums, um, yes. And in, in enjoy cultural 
street um yeah it would be interesting to know kind of what the limitations are of this and you know how much can it recognize so it, that would be a good one to, to um to have a bit bit, bit of a um, follow-up on jack jack you're right jack oh mark just a comment on that picture of this i did have a look at that last week uh it's not free it's about 37 pound a year oh right you get a seven day free trial and then you've got to pay for it but it's i i don't I, I wouldn't use it enough to sort of justify sort of ah right away that sort of money, but just so people are aware, it does cost money. For the oh, iPhone, Jack, are you, is that, is that for the iPhone? Yeah, Jack, are you? Mm. Go ahead, Mark. I think you were going to ask the same thing. Do you have yeah, an iPhone? No, no, you, you, you continue. Uh, sorry, I, I've, I've got an iPhone. That's uh, that's where. What going. number is it, if you don't mind me asking, um, Jack? I've got the iPhone SE twenty twenty two. Twenty two. So that's fairly. I'm not too familiar with the SEs, but I bet you you'll still, if you go out and take a picture of a flower in your garden or even your dog, because I did do a dog in a park once because I was looking at flowers and the woman had an iPhone and I said, you know, you could, because she didn't know the flower either. I said, you know, you can identify it with your phone. And she took the picture and went to the info and it, it gave us the same, uh, it was a spring flower, a, a bulb that was coming up out of in the big cemetery uh, that I went to. Uh, no, no, that people walk that. their dog. I've taken yeah. note of what, what's I've taken note of that. What's this? So I'll, I'll give it a try tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, because that does come with your phone and it's free. So we all like the free over the, <laughs> you know, always. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Any other questions? No one's got their hand up. No. Has anybody else got any um any apps or um technology that um they perhaps have bought or heard of um that can help with their you know overall well-being? So I've got got a couple of devices. I've just bought a, a running machine. You know, my my eyes are not good enough to um run, you know, um outside. Um, I don't have a guide runner or anything like that. So it's something as simple as a treadmill, you know, um, it gets me me 7,000 steps a day when we're not out sort of walking the dog, um, which we do um, together. But I can still come down and I can get on the treadmill. Again, that helps me with my phys uh, physical well-being um, apps that I like to work out. So I've got workout apps as well that I tend to use um and everything is all off of my phone and although it's it's got video attached to it you know I've, I've been doing it for such a long time I know what the workouts are now so literally I just listen to it and just follow the instructions and um, again that helps me with my, my my physical well-being as well I just wondered if anyone else has kind of any you know, meditation apps yoga apps you know anything that we can um perhaps try out um hello yeah hi it's nisha hiya yeah i just want to know if anybody um has any way around or can do anything you know when you go to any website like on on uh, safari or, or on google right and it always comes up with cookies, managing your cookies. Um, and you always have to like, I always have to struggle to go like halfway down the third page or something to accept or not accept or reject. But there's no way of like switching this off because every different website, you always get this cookies message. And it's so hard when you've got a visual impairment to yeah. keep scrolling down, trying to get rejected or accept it. Because, you know, like, it can be a lot of writing on the page. And mm. uh, when you're using your, um, like, your rotor prompts on the iPhone, they don't always pick it, pick up the, um, you know, the icon buttons. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know I, if, I, if anybody's found a hat for it yet or any, um, you know, sensory software companies found anywhere. Because, you know, it's really, really hard all the time when you're managing through the cookie. Mm. Does anyone know how to to get rid of? I know I I have my sometimes have my phone zoomed quite in, and the worst thing is when the accept button is off screen, and you then have to zoom out, and then accept to zoom back in again. And and uh, there's, there's been a couple of times when the accept button or the confirm button has been off screen, and I can't actually see it. So I totally find that a frustration. I mean, I know. 
I know it's for GBDR rules, but yeah. the problem is it's so difficult when you're visually impaired because it wastes so much time just trying <laughs> to find the cookie button. Are, yeah. are you using, sorry, Mark, it's Scott what? again. Are you using, yeah. are you using voiceover on your phone? Oh, of course. Or just, course. okay, oh, so but... the, the easiest way for me, uh, we had this discussion in my group in Canada uh, when I was on tech last year, is to uh, single swipe left or right. If you start at the bottom of the page, which usually the accept is on the lower part of the page and just swipe finger, finger yeah, single finger swipe uh, from the right side to the left side, and it'll walk you through. It's it's a bit of a pain because it'll read every uh, uh, box that it goes through, and you'll finally get to the accept, even if it's off the page. Um, you can start at the top of the page as well and just keep swiping. You'll get pretty quick at it. I, I realize that uh, the accept button is usually, you know, three quarters of the way down is where it usually is. Um, I think you can buy you can buy a program now uh, that will <clears throat> bl block it, but I'm not too familiar. I, I, I won't confirm that. I'll, I'll ask Tim, who's the tech guy that I speak to, if, if there is a program, and if I get it, I'll send it to Mark. And, oh, that'll be brilliant. But it is, you know, because, yeah. it is a because page. You, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. You do it on but one website. You manage to do it on one website, and then if you go to a different website, you have to do it again. Yeah. So and learn, you have to go through the your, whole process again. <laughs> how's your thumb it, actually? It's a good thumb exercise. Yeah, yeah. There's no problem with that. <laughs> That's no the quickest that. way in voiceover to do it. If you're sighted and you're using, yeah. then again, you're gonna have to flow off the screen. That's the problem. It hides off the screen. Whereas right. when you yeah. swipe, you'll get to it. It'll say accept cookies and when you're sighted, you know. it's easy. You can see what it, what's on the screen. You can just go to reject or accept. But when you're not, yeah. sometimes in different websites, it's um, formatted differently as well. It's written yeah. on a different format. So, you know, you don't always get the same format. That's the number no. problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's a problem we have to live with for the moment. There's, there's no commonality here. I just yeah. want... Mm. Yeah, so, because um, I just wanted to say, because I, with, with regard to the same thing, I, I, I've forgotten the name of the previous speaker. But yeah, so I, I do the same thing in terms of either starting from the bottom. So basically from the bottom of the screen, swiping backwards, because um, I've also got voiceover. But one of the other things that you can do is, um, I think it's a three finger swipe up and that basically moves very quickly down the page. So if let's say you need to get to the bottom, um, if you're doing three finger swipes up, then it just basically moves you down the page much quicker so you can get to the bottom fairly quickly um, of the page and then start looking around there. Um, also in the top, not top, the bottom left of most screens is a vertical, what, I think it's called a vertical bar or something. Um, and if you tap on that, that allows you to determine where you are in the page. So if you wanna to go to the top of the page, then I think it's like 0% um, and 100% takes you to the bottom of the page. So it's oh. just it's a it's just like a, a control thing that's bottom left of the majority of pages where there's more than one page. Um, it's just like a whenever whenever you're scrolling on a web page or any kind of page, normally at the bottom left, you'll it'll say it'll it'll say scroll bar. I think it's called scroll bar. Um, and basically, when you're in scroll bar, swiping up or down will take you either to the top or the or the bottom of the page or midway so you can choose what percent you want to go so it moves very quickly either to the top or to the bottom of the page and then you can go to the accept cookies section yeah that's not an issue going up and down the pages is quite easy that's not a problem the problem is you have to go hunting looking for the accept button or the reject button that's the problem yeah. okay that make it that <laughs> make it very very easy and yeah uh Right, and, I, and I've actually yeah. got some vision, you know, in a high contrast mode, I still struggle. And like that, sometimes they put it in different colours, you know, mm. the dark blue, you know, and if it's dark blue on a black background, that's even harder to It's, we'll to, find a to solution. Begin with, start, yeah, to begin with, start at either the top or, and swipe right and just keep going through or start at the bottom. I now go to about the centre of the page and start swiping right 
and it'll just go through each segment until it gets to accept mm -hmm. uh, accept cookies or the reject I think is usually before the only problem with rejecting sometimes is it it makes you go and decide what cookies you want to accept and uh, I've been told just to accept them and move on you can later go and clean them out if you want yeah um, Robin here can clean I clean out your cat can I make a suggestion Mark, Mark yeah. Robin here can yeah I absolutely um, with some websites uh when you're you you enter them you can there's a click to go straight i think it's called uh, go straight to content or subject in other words you can miss the, all the preamble i wonder if, if there's some part of our, our community where someone could suggest to website designers that when it gets to cookie acceptance maybe they could have a button which is go go straight to accept or decline Mm. like you have on the, sometimes I go to a website and it says to go straight because I'm inquiring about I know, looking for a particular show in a theatre and I've clicked on the link and it'll say go, go straight to content or you can go through all of the preamble yeah well it's, 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 it's very easy to do that on a um, on a web page you know it's like a I can't remember what it's called my, my web design days I'm a bit rusty but you can set something um, to indicate you click on it and um, it would it kind of like a magnet. It, it, it just shoots you straight to what yeah. you've got to click on. So yeah, um, it's it's an easy fix, and you'll find a lot of these um, website widgets, the visually impaired, are are so easy to fix. But or they perhaps don't... or yeah, or perhaps when you're um, when you switch on accessibility, if it comes up, then just one message: accept or reject cookies. And then when you know you're surfing the web, it, it shouldn't you know oh, it, it oh, wouldn't top up again. That that's a good idea, but then obviously you 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 run a risk to compromise where you should maybe navigate onto a site where you you don't want to accept the the cookies. You know, they, they, but then again, if you're if you're happy to um, have that setting switched on on a phone, um, mm. then and you're you're prepared to um, risk any or any kind of anything that goes onto your phone or content that you might read and that's something that would be obviously um at the, the responsibility of the of the device owner or whoever's on the web page yeah. your yeah. your information this is this is why they have these um these pop-ups come up to protect your identity and your information so yeah there are easy, there are ways of getting around it but then at the same time do you really want to uh, to um jeopardize your information and your personal details it's a it's a very very catch-22 we don't like it um you know but you know it, it may be there may be a way around it you know um, it, it really slow it, it, it really slows a visually impaired person down when they're using the net That's yeah sure. yeah yeah absolutely yeah but if when anyone get, does come up with that app, anyone does come up with an app in happy days you know we'd be more than happy to um mm. to share it or you know to get some reviews on it or anything like that so um yeah please pass me any any Thank feedback you. you have regarding this or any tips and him ping it to me via email um, i think you're right though mark it's the legal uh, they want us reading all that they want the cited reading it too most of us skip as fast as we can to the accept and um i'm sorry i forgot the gentleman who was first inquiring about it um once you get your thumb and, and figure out uh, how quickly you can move through it, it, it goes a lot quicker. Uh, at the beginning, it took me a while, but now I can motor to it pretty quickly. Uh, I started about middle page and start swiping right and uh, get to it really quickly and hit it. So um, it's the, one of those things the, we have the, to put I was going to say, the, the other possible way of doing it is when we have the so on Android, you've got your links, paragraph, words, controls, yeah. setting, so yeah. you can probably get it quicker, navigate it quicker that way. Cool. Yeah. But that's Android. Definitely, definitely lots of uh, different different options um, to, to try out. I, I, was, I was just going to raise one, you were know, talking about mental health and wellbeing. Mm -hmm. I, I work as a counsellor. Okay. Um, and it was a couple of new apps that have come out recently. There's one called Head On for mental health and well-being, um, and that does a lot of mindfulness, relaxation, um, sleep kind of remedy kind of stuff as well, and focus on uh, anxiety, stress management. 
um, and I've he's been using it with you know a few of my clients over the past couple of months, and they've given it good feedback. It's quite accessible as well. You know, I've done it myself, and it's quite you know for, you know certainly friendly for anybody with any sort of visual impairment or blind, basically. And the other good one that's just come out recently is another one called Six Thousand Thoughts, which is basically going to take over my job one day. <laughs> it's artificial intelligence. Um, and you just speak into it, say you're having a troubled day or whatever, you speak into it and it'll help you sort of work through your thought processes. Um, and they're both on Android and um, on Apple as well. Excellent. Well, what we'll do is, um, what's the, the first one called Heads On? And the other one uh, head, called... head On, Head, head on. on. And the other one was? 6,000 Thoughts. That's thoughts. called that because apparently we have 6,000 Thoughts a day. Okay. No, that's cool. What we do is we'll get them, we'll get the links to both of them. You know, they might be worth um if anyone wants to to buy them out. Um we'll we'll add them to the um follow-up email. What we will do is at the end, um, if you are new um to this group, as we are recording um the audio, it will be uploaded to, to our YouTube channel. And once it's uploaded, we will send the link out in a follow-up email with some of the tips and hints and any tech advice or apps that have been we've, we've spoken about will go into um, the follow-up email so it'll be a case of you can just just click on and um and try um the the apps or for the software yourself um including there'll also be um a full link to our website where you can have a look at our discover well-being service as well that's something you'd be interested in um looking into or if you have any clients or um anyone you know that you think might benefit from this service um it's definitely worth um looking at you know we we, we want to um community before they get to the point where you know perhaps you know, intervention might be might be required you know there's ways that we can help manage their site loss condition in a way that's beneficial to their well-being and um, then that is exactly why we we launched it noticed there was a rise in isolation you know and also uh, people's anxiety levels stress levels uh, were quite in height during the pandemic and and coming out of lockdown and this is why we set the well-being service up and we are celebrating its, its one year anniversary this month so um, which we launched out last year so, you know if, if anyone wants to share that service with anyone then please feel free to do so as well it'd be much appreciated. Um, okay noted mark thank you cool has anyone got any other um sort of well-being advice you know anything that anyone really does to if you've got having a bad, we all have bad days um and you know uh, sometimes tech is always a good go-to um, when you've had a bit of a bad day, sometimes it's the tech that causes a bad day. I know I'm, I'm having some experiences with um, my phone at the moment. I think I'm in a new one, and me Samsung smartwatch is just packed up. So again, you know, I can't count my steps. I've got, I had to revert back to an old, an old watch. I'm thankful that it still works, and, I, and I've managed to um, reset it and, and link it to my phone. But um, yeah, does, does anyone have any wearables, you know, um, that you like to wear? Do you count your steps? Do you count your calories? You know, um, are there any other smart apps that you guys use to help navigate, you know, to get you out and about? Um, uh, Robin here, I, I, I have an iPhone and I have an, I, an Apple Watch and that, that, that tracks my activity at the gym and my steps my calorie burn and uh, how much time I'm sitting and standing and moving uh, so that's works that works quite well and is pretty accessible mm. my partner yeah. has a Fitbit but then my partner's sighted so that's uh, how that's do you better. find the gym um do you, I take it you go to a, a a sort of a regular fitness gym do you how do you find navigating around the gym because that's one yeah. thing that that I struggle with that's why I do a lot of my working out indoors because i just find gyms too busy you know the, the, the equipment is always too close together people don't put weights away 
people just sit in silence on a machine and the amount of times I've almost gone sat on someone because they're just twiddling on their phone mm-hmm. rather than actually lifting the weights you know um you know how do you find yourself getting around the gym if you don't mind me asking and not sure, Robin here. Uh, well, I'm I'm fortunate in that I, I can afford to pay for a trainer. So I have a personal trainer. Ah, right. That's the way forward. Who, who I meets me there. I go twice a week and I have an hour with him and he guides me around the gym and then puts me into a, a spin studio and I then do a spin class twice a week too. That's cool. That's yeah. So, but if I didn't have a personal trainer, I'd be very wary of going to a gym because exactly as you say, even my trainer, who's extremely good and I've been with for many years, you have to be very careful where you walk, where you go, where you stand. Mm. Because people do, do not seem to be aware sometimes that there's a blind person in their midst. Mm. Yeah, especially when they're swinging around, you know, 15, yes. 15, 20 kilo dumbbells, you know, you don't want to be clocked by one of those. <laughs> no. And um, Because people don't have, even sighted people don't have spatial awareness sometimes when they're in a gym. It's, uh, it's quite you know and they're not very tidy as well when people in especially the free weight yeah. which i used to use very true yeah it's scott it's scott mark sorry robin uh hi scott i find the same i would not go to the gym unless i had sighted help um it's just not a place a safe place for uh, even some sighted places people it's not safe because not everyone is is not selfish some of the people in there think it's their gym, their gym only, and they leave whatever anywhere and everywhere. And just, as you said, they're on their phones. And so I, I don't recommend going to a gym without a sighted guide to help you to the rowing machine or the bike. Uh, it just can be dangerous. Yeah. Uh, so I, I agree. I agree. And with the, the gym I go to is very good, but they've had one or two accidents with sighted people injuring other sighted people. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It, so. it, does, it does happen. And, and the other thing I've noticed with um, gym equipment, especially your cardio machines, a lot of it now is um, is all touch screen. Um, and I don't know <clears throat> how you guys get on. The, the, the treadmill that I've got has kind of got raised buttons, you know, so, you know, and, and even I put bump ons on them, you know, to, to know what is program, what is the up speed, what is the down speed, what is quick start, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the one that I've got has got a massive um, screen at the bottom that's in high contrast mode where I can actually see the, the, the where how far I've run, my calories, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, um, I've got some useful vision, but... I've never come across any gym equipment that has audio, you know, description, you know, if if, if if you could get to your machine, but then how you turn your machine on or get to the program that you want to, unless you just hit the quick start and then just put on your phone a 30, a 30 minute timer, that's the best we've got, you know, but if anyone's got any, and this would be a good for people's physical well-being, you know, if anyone's got any tips or hints on how to manage gym equipment that is all screen, you know, and not accessibility friendly, you know, it would be great to hear your advice. Well, Robin, again, I, I've been using gyms all my life. Um, and I'm 80 now, so it's a long time. And I've never found a, a piece of gym equipment with speech output ever. Uh, so since I lost my sight. I, I'm the same. I'm yeah. the same, Robin. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even if you put your headphones in, you know, you don't want everybody to listen to what you're listening to, but most people have headphones in, you know, a lot of them are Bluetooth now, you know, so you don't get tangled up in wires, but none of them have got any audible uh, voiceover settings. And uh, it, 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 it's another thing that kind of, I personally bugs me, you know, um, but again, you know, it's one of those things that frustrates you, but, you know, you've got to find a way of getting around it or adapting. Um, yes. Can I just ask a quick question, please? Yeah, certainly. It's my mood here. Um, the person who was talking about the, I think it's Robin, sorry if I got your name wrong. Um, the I person, either, the person, yeah, he was saying that you use your iPhone and uh, Apple Watch for counting steps and calories and all that. I've recently got into walking a little bit more for physical and mental health. I think it's great. Just just walking in, in a, obviously a safe um 
And yeah, I'd, I'd like to know sometimes how many steps I've done, just, just out of interest to see, because they're always talking about these days, um, 10,000 steps. I'm always wondering how many steps I would. So I'm not, like I said earlier, I'm not great at all with tech. You know, I'm a bit of a tech phobe. So is it, do you need um, an actual, like an app, a third party app using an iPhone? Or can you, is it just inbuilt? Um, in and, and the Apple phone and the Apple watch is inbuilt. So it comes with the phone and the watch. Oh, um, right. I was just going to say, yeah, if you go to the health, so one of the, in, in the main menu, um, you've got, health so as long as your iphone's with you when you're walking around if you go to the tab health in there it'll tell you how many steps you've done and how many kilometers but you can also change you can change it around so depends on how much detailed information you would like so when i'm out and about i will have my iphone so when i get home i just go to the health app um which is it's a pre-built-in function of iphone so i just go to health and it'll tell me my step counts and how many kilometers I've I've covered. Oh, that's interesting. Just I don't think I've ever used that. <laughs> uh, so you open the health app, but then how yes. do you how do you reset it for each day? Say so in the morning you're leaving the house. It's it, it 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 does it every day. So it, it the the calculation is based on that day. So the next day it'll start afresh. Oh wow! So you okay. can view your weekly statistics. It'll say things like the day you are walking more steps than previously, because it, it'll, it'll kind of track what you're doing in terms of step counts each day. Um, yeah. And yeah. then tell you whether you've walked, you've done more steps today versus yesterday or that week or, um, but you can configure it, you know, if you want to change how it kind of, you know, um, does, does the, does the recording. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. So as long as you've got your phone with you or your watch on. It yeah. Yes. Those. That's great. Thank you so much. I'm going to try that. It, That's... It's, um, been, I it's been just... tracking you and you don't even know it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, the, well, the thing is, yes. you, can, you can go after this meeting, you can go to it now because if you've had it yeah. all the time you've been out and about, all that information will be there. Mm. Okay, so, uh, mm -hmm. so basically, yeah, gee, yeah. Um, so I'm just thinking in the house. Yeah, so in the house, you just really have to have your watch on, yeah? Or, or your phone in your pocket has to let yes. you be... Because actually, um, I was just going to come back to something Mark was talking about, because similar to Mark, it's, it's not ideal. Um, so Mark was talking about, so I've got a treadmill um, and it's got a quick start and I'm, it, it's got um, buttons on it in terms of um, uh, incline and speed. So in, on the left um, of, so it's, it's got handholds on the left and right. And on the left is kind of incline or decline and on the right is speed. So when I, whenever I press, so I know which button to press for a quick start, and I more or less know, um, because it's got buttons, two buttons on either side, either to increase my speed or decrease my speed, it's kind of where I have to kind of count the number of times I press it to get to set speed. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how I do, you know, manage in terms of when I go running, I know, okay, I want to, you know, it, X number of times gets me to X speed. And what I have done in the past, I don't necessarily do it now, but what I did do in the past is I would have either, you can either have your watch or your um, my phone in my pocket and that would tell me how many kilometers I covered because I wouldn't be able to read the screen. So I'd either have to wait till my wife came home from work to tell me what my, what my stats were on screen or sometimes I would just have my phone in my pocket when I was on the treadmill and that would tell me, you know, roughly how many kilometers I'd, I'd run. Um, the other thing that I did find out, but I, I didn't I didn't buy it because it's very expensive, but I was in Oxford and I had a look at they had a one of those expensive bikes called again. Um I've forgotten what they're called. Oh the uh yeah, the, yeah, the Peloton bikes. Peloton, yes. Yeah. yes. And I did go into the Peloton store and I mentioned about my accessibility needs and they didn't know much about it. So they had a play around and it did do stuff like high contrast and it did have narration. So it did have oh. voiceover, um, oh, really? the, the ability to do voiceover. Um, but it was it was more the voiceover, I think it seemed more a kind of Android based voiceover system, which I was very unfamiliar with. Right. Um, I'm more familiar with the iPhone based voiceover, but it, it did have accessibility features. Um, oh, so it did, it, you could do stuff like increase. If, you, if you've got any sight, then you could do things like, um, change the screens in terms of color contrast, screen size, 
but as I say, it did also have um, talk the talk back feature. Um, but it, it it was just such an expensive bike, and I didn't know if I would use it as much compared to um, the cost. Because I think as much as it talked to you, I didn't know how interactive it would be with the classes because a lot of pelotons, I think you have to kind of go into classes and do various selections. And I, I didn't know how, how kind of um, what it was like because they weren't able to give any feedback just because no one else had come in inquiring about it. But it, I, I did at least see that it did have those functions and features, but I didn't explore it any further than to actually see that it did have all of that pre-built in. And you do have Thank to you. have the, the bike is very expensive to begin with, and you do pay for your classes. So yes, exactly. Yeah. I, didn't, I, I have an old uh, Schwinn that a friend, he was a cyclist, and he had five different stationary. So he gave me his oldest one, which was fine for me because he just taught me heart rate and, uh, you know, pedals start off slowly and don't, uh, you know, my wife got on it the next day and she couldn't look for, walk for a week. Uh, <laughs> so, you, you know, yeah, because care. he said, go easy, listen to a show for a half hour time and do whatever you have to do. Just don't, you know, and as, uh, as you said, you've got a bike with uh, buttons that you just beat three times or push the button three times to get to where you know you are. It's a, it's a matter of just like your phones, memorizing the steps and how to get there. So um, what I have yeah. actually used in the past when I've been either cycling or on the treadmill is an app that just basically tells you roughly what time you're at. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it just kind of gives you, it, it, it kind of like if I'm doing like a hit type thing or anything like that, it's it just like a voice yeah. type thing that, yeah, just. Yeah. Maybe you could share that with Mark and yeah, to, uh, send out to everyone uh, for hey. those of us that are, uh, yeah any, any any apps any apps because you can get the, the the nike run app which you can actually get on your yeah. smartphones and it can go on your watch as well and going back to counting your steps um i don't know whether um it works on the iphone it definitely works on a samsung device if you've got samsung health which i use open all the time you can just ask bixby which is the samsung equivalent of siri what is my step count today it will tell yeah. you what the step count is and then when you say well, what's my step count for the week it will give you your average to make sure that you actually are doing your average step so you don't it, sometimes if you've got your Siri set up that so you you can just ask Siri something it will just tell you so you don't have to have open up the app to find your step count it will just tell you so you know these are the beneficials of being able to speak to your phone and have it speak back to you you can ask it any questions you know and it will give you the answer so, yeah, and because goes, on and the goes, Apple phone, yeah. yeah, because on the Apple phone, you can ask Siri pretty much anything that's built into the phone. Mm. Um, similar, you know, uh, once you get it adapted to the health app, though, you'll be able to go in and, as uh, the gentleman said, set it up the way you like it. And uh, I don't really have to do it anymore because if I'm walking with my wife, she's competing with my daughter and uh, <laughs> count is big it's a big thing in kilometers and uh, she can't even argue with me anymore about oh no we only did three kilometers when i know we've done seven you know we're we're going out for a light walk and 15 kilometers later i'm dead and needing to, i'm a diabetic need needing to eat or hit some glucose tablets and i said you know we've walked 15 kilometers today no we have not well anyway i get off track so you know, see, there's, there's, a, there's a flaw with the Fitbits compared yeah. to, say, for example, the Garmin's. The Garmin's run off um, the satellites through space and everything else like that. So, say, for example, if you're swinging your arms about, it doesn't count the arm swings. Where the Fitbits, they count the arm swings. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so for example, say you've done like ten thousand steps, and whoever you've gone out with says, "Well, I've done fifteen thousand You know it's a lie because they've been swinging their arms about, <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Well, that's my wife. Also, 
it adapts to your step. If you have a long stride and you're six four, your your steps are going to be less than your wife who is five four and and take <laughs> short little steps. So yes, it's true. it's not a it's Over not exact. Energy. The kilometers the kilometers should be exact. But again, we're we're I think it's three to five satellites floating over our head every 15 minutes. That's increasing to about 10 or 15 in the next few years. So mm -hmm. your your accuracy, your door accuracy on your fine mice and, and where you're going is not going to be 10 meters. It's going to be almost pin you right to the front door if the satellite can read you. You know, you're not blocked by a building or <coughs> stuff like that. Yeah. So it's really, still quite well, miraculous what it can do, I think. So, uh, oh, it is. Jack, yeah. and can, can I interject, please? There <laughs> is an app that I, I do a lot of walking called Map My Walk. Yeah. And it's very accurate. Um, it does, I don't know if it, I think it counts steps as well. It certainly gives you your speed, your distance, your calories. And I was going to also say that thing about the Fitbit watch. If you're drinking a beer, it's counting it as steps. So it's, good, <laughs> it's a good, healthy way of having a beer. I don't know if I want that recorded or not. I'd be in trouble when I get home. Okay. Not to mention the map would show exactly where I've been. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you got to turn location off. Where have you been for the last four hours? Yeah. Oh, no, you haven't. Yeah. Well, been, yeah. <laughs> and oh, that's all right. For those of you that want to do your steps, if you are working or even when you're at the computer, you can now buy uh, a stepper that sits underneath your desk, oh. and you do your steps as you're working. Um, I don't know what it's called, but uh, my daughter has one. She's got all this techy stuff, and because my wife was because she walks to work down to Trafalgar Square, she's, her step count was much larger than my daughter's. So she bought this gadget that sits under her desk and she that does her right. steps as she's working. So mm -hmm. if you do need to exercise the, while you're working or even reading your emails, the, there are gadgets like that. Oh, excellent. I'll have to look at that one. Just let you know, it is, it's five to eight. Um, we'll try and sort of, um, sort of get, get wrapped by um, 8, 8 p.m. so you guys can enjoy your uh, the rest of your evening and perhaps go out for a walk. Um, <laughs> Mark, can, I just, can I just mention for you Android users, those of you that um, seeing AI was just for Apple, there is Envision AI, which is not Envision Glasses, it's Envision AI. It's an app uh, that does similar things to the seeing AI. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, I think it doesn't read money and it doesn't do something else, but it does everything else that uh, seeing AI and Google Lookup, I think, is the other one that mm -hmm. is similar. Uh, one I use. Google user. That one, that's the okay. one I use. Yeah. Very, very, that, 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 that's my, that's my go-to um, is Google, Google Lookup. So it's really good, really good app. Marion's got a hand up. Oh, Marion's got a hand up. Hiya. Hello, that's Keith here. Oh, hiya. <laughs> I wondered if anyone had any experience with the, a, I think it's a new thing from Dolphin Computers. It's supposed to be the easiest. Guide Connect. Com oh, Guide Connect, Marion says. Does anybody know anything about that? Go oh, Connect. Guide, no. guide is Connect. It's like a computer. It's a laptop. TV. It's a, attached to your TV, if you like. It's a laptop. Oh. And you can hmm. use it as a laptop, or you can put it through your TV. Yeah. Oh, oh well, yeah, any kind of screen, I would imagine. Yeah. With the, it, it, it was called Go, was it Go yeah. Connect or Guide Connect? Guide. Guide. Guide, Guide Connect. I. Yeah. I I used um, Dolphin Supernova and I haven't come across, I get all of their updates and emails and I haven't come across that, but I'd be more than happy to have a look um, at some reviews for you um, and sort of get back to you with a little bit of feedback if you like. Yeah, um, to get fine. Reviews, or if anyone else has come across that, um, if you're a Supernova, super, uh, 
if you're a Dolphin fan. Um, yeah. Well, not particularly, but mm. it's just this system. It, so you get a laptop and it's accessible and you get a remote control, little remote control, and you can do everything through the yeah. remote control. You yeah. can phone. talk to it. You're supposed, you're supposed to be all singing and all dancing, but I wanted to check it out. I would like to check it out. Uh, you know, just how clever is it? Because I, I, it's, it's you, it's tech for people with sight loss. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I would like to uh, um, do writing, and uh, where a process is best for that. Okay. So I wonder what whether that was possible. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Just jumping online Hi. to have a look at it. Um, and it's something that you connect to your TV to get you in contact with friends and family and some entertainment. Oh, it's easy access to a range of entertainment. Easy access to a range of entertainment. Yeah. I wonder yeah. it's similar to a smart box for um, the visually impaired. Um, but I can definitely look at some YouTube videos and, and perhaps attach one to the follow-up email for you to have a little listening to. Ooh. Hi, Mark. You are right? Thank Hi. you. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Right, no worries. Mm. I think I did see a, a brief tutorial once um, on Guide Connect from, I think it was someone from the RNIB. Um, and this was related to, I think, PCs and laptops. And from what I recall, it's essentially um, an out of the box kind of system that you plug in. And it takes over control of the way that you navigate and use your machine. So rather right. than being dependent on Windows and navigating around all of that, everything is kind of streamlined into this one particular portal. And it basically will categorize everything into kind of, I guess, stuff like entertainment, emails, word processing, um, and there'll be several categories. And within those categories, you it, it enables you to do whatever it is that you want to do so if you're looking to do entertainment then it controls essentially how basically i think it's meant to make it much easier for you to just be able to go to websites and do any kind of navigation similar with i think like word processing or emails um it hooks everything into this one platform um Mm. And it basically just has shortcuts for you to be able to do whatever you want to do. So if you want to send emails or, or read emails, I think there are all of these shortcuts that you can do to easily do all of that. And it's just everything is used. This portal kind of is your access to doing this kind of set categories of things. So it's like a finite list of categories of items that you do on your machine. No, oh, that's awesome. No, what we do is, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get some more information out and perhaps if there are any tutorials like Toss mentioned, um, on the follow-up as well. Um, Rita's got a hand up. Hi, Rita. Oh, you muted. Hello. Oh, there you go. Hi, Rita. Hello. Yeah, it was just about the Guide Connect. I, I haven't used it myself, but I, I do know somebody that, that has used it successfully, somebody that um, doesn't have any sight at all. Um, I think it's a simplified way to you to do what, Com computers do hmm. I, I think that that's the impression yeah. I've been given and and this chap actually he he's he's used guide connect but but I think he's he's now moved on to he uses uh windows and a screen reader but it was a way in for him right. mm. Mm. interesting I wonder what it costs mm. oh it's about a thousand pounds 885 oh. Oh, 875 quite... for the license and the guide connect on your TV. Thank you. Yeah. I think they might come and demonstrate it to you if you ask them to. Um, I don't know. They're based in Worcester, the yeah. company that does it. But yeah. I, I know they, they do come out and do demos. Yeah. Yeah, he demonstrated it and he was saying what well, fantastic it is and all that lot. And Sounded really good, but uh, in later on, I thought, mm, is it quite as 
clever as it seemed. Because mm. the, the spell checker on your phone will, if you're saying uh, you want to meet your mate in the pub, it's fine for that. But if you want to write anything, do anything a bit more complicated, um, you just can't do it. And I, I wondered if there was any problems like that with it. Well, I would have thought if they came and did a, a personal demonstration for you, you would be able to try it out. Mm. And you know the things that you want to do with it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, package. so you could try it out. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It has the security is all built into it and kept updated by Dolphin. Yeah. 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 Good. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Well, like I say, we'll definitely get some um, some info. Um, and there are there are any reviews, uh, like independent, um, impartial or third party reviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of yeah. Places on YouTube that uh, do demos for accessibility tech, and they're not kind of endorsed by Dolphin or your, you know, and they will give you an honest review. Um, we'll see if we can find some of them and we'll put them on the follow up email um, so you can have sort of a, uh, a review and see what you think, whether it's something that you would be able to utilize. Um, obviously, for that that price, you want to make sure that um, it's something that you're going to that you're going to use and benefit from. Yeah, that's it. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it's. Okay. Uh, it, I'm good. I'm going oh, to have on, to sorry. leave shortly. I'm going to leave shortly. I've got dinner waiting. Yeah, that's all right. No, yeah, we'll we'll wrap up soon, but. Yeah. Uh, no, but thank you everybody um, for joining us, and thanks for everyone for sharing your, um, you know, your tech advice around well-being. You know, there's lots of bits and pieces out there that can help us. You know, with our fitness. Um, there was another. If, if anyone is counting their calories, you know, don't forget uh, My Fitness Pal, um, which is a very, very good app. If you if you're counting your calories, it will it will ping all of the barcodes on your room um, and read out all um, nutritional information on anything that you're trying to keep track on so but uh, thanks very much for sharing all of the fitness apps and the machines you know and if anyone does have any kind of other advice that they want to share with us please just drop me an email to um services at retinauk.org.uk or info at retinauk.org.uk and um, I will be gladly to add that to our uh, follow-up email that will come along in a few days' time, along with the audio recording. So, um, I do appreciate everyone's uh, coming along. Um, if you are anyone is in London um, on the 23rd of um, July, um, our London Peer Support Group will be having a picnic in Russell Square Gardens so um please feel free to come along and enjoy um a nice day in one of um london's prestigious parks um you'll be meeting by the water fountain all details are available on our website and i'll also include it in the follow-up email with any other in the uk events as well we'll also share our annual professional conference uh, for those that didn't get a chance to attend in person or be online as well, which we had which happened the weekends ago as well. So thank you everybody for joining us. Um, I will be putting out an email um also very soon about the topic for uh, our member meeting. Um, um and it'll be great with your thoughts and feedback and comments and questions around that trade and show as well. It's gonna be very interesting. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us. I'm Mark Baxter. To my uh, right is Caroline, who's been helping me on comms. So thank her. And um, I bid you a very, very uh, lovely evening and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Take care of yourself. See you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. We hope you have enjoyed this recording. If you have any questions, queries, or wish to leave any feedback, then please leave it in the comments section below. Alternatively, you can send your inquiries to info at retinauk.org.uk. Contact us via the telephone on 01280 821 334 
or call our helpline on 0300 111 4000 which is open Monday to Friday 9.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. If you would like to know more about our local peer groups, when your next meeting will be held, or if you wish to get involved in creating your own group, or would like to know more about our services that Retina UK provides, then please visit our information and support page on our website www.retinauk.org.uk and navigate to our local peer group page. Thanks again for listening. We hope to see you again soon. Take care and bye for now.